Hi everyone, it's Trish here from the MTech team and I'm going to take you through a refresher on the basics of sharing settings in your Google Drive. You are in the driver's seat and in complete control of who and when you share with. So hopefully this little checkup will let you go out and kick the tires of your own drive and make sure that you are sharing things appropriately. The nice thing about Google is that the sharing settings will look exactly the same no matter where you are, whether you're in your drive at a folder level or whether you're in a document and on that individual level, the sharing settings will always look the same. Let's go over the basics of sharing an individual file that hasn't been shared yet. I wonder if you open up something like a new Google Doc or slides or anything like that, you can see in the top right hand corner, a share button that has a lock meaning it's private and shared only to you. That's the default for any new document we create. I can go ahead and start to share, and there's two levels of which I can share with. I can share with specific people, or of course, I can share with a link. When I share with specific people, I could type in my colleague's name, and then I can choose, are they an editor? Can they simply view it, or are they allowed to comment on it? In this case, I want my colleague Ben to be able to work on this with me. I can give him a note and of course I can send this to him. One of the things that you'll notice is that there's a gear button on any of your sharing settings where you can decide, are editors allowed to change permissions and share? I often will uncheck this because maybe I want to share this with Ben, but I don't want Ben to be able to share it with anyone else. I just want him to be able to work on this with me. Also, I can change it so that anybody who's viewing it or commenting it, maybe I don't want them to be able to download it, print it, or copy it. I only want them to be able to look at it. I can uncheck these boxes. I can, of course, now send this to Ben. Now, there's some more things that we can do within the sharing. First of all, I'm gonna notice that now that lock is gone and I can see that it's shared with a person. Some of the things that I can do now is I can go ahead and I can say for Ben, I can give him temporary access. This is a nice little thing where I can add an expiration date. This is really fantastic. If you only want to share something for a short amount of time, perhaps maybe like with a student teacher. So I can choose when I want that to um, expire. Another thing that I can do is I'm going to just turn him back to the editor here. I can also make him an owner. So perhaps I have a document, we've started it. I no longer need it. This is him. I was just getting him started. I can transfer ownership to him. And of course, finally, at any point, I can remove that sharing permission for that user. Another way that I can share, as you can see, is I can get a link. The default whenever we start to share is going to be having it with anyone in ECSD. That doesn't mean that anybody in ECSD can come into my Google Drive and find this. It means that if they're signed in with their ECSD account, I can copy this link and anyone can see it. This is great for perhaps some lesson plans that we'd like to share with other teaching colleagues. I can also change this to back to restricted so that only people that I specify can have it. And of course, anyone with the link means nobody has to log in. Anyone who has this link can view it. We want to make sure that we're being very careful with anyone with the link. Again, this needs to make sure that this is perhaps educational content, such as a lesson plan or resource. There's no sensitive student information or identifiable information. And that we're not just sharing this link out randomly. We know where this is going. As well, default is view. Anyone with the link can edit. We call that the setting of tiers. That literally means anybody who you don't know can edit. So you're definitely going to really want to make sure you're cautious using that particular setting. Now my document is shared. I can do this exact same process within my drive. If I share from a folder level, I can have it so that anything that goes in that folder will take on the exact same sharing settings. And so in this case, wherever I see a little white bubble head, that means I have some type of sharing on it. And of course, if I don't, it means it's not shared. So of course I can share it and I can say, I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna be able to make it so anyone in ECSD can view these educational resources that I put in this folder. 
this is great for if you want to be able to have some videos to be able to be shared, perhaps on your Google Slides with students. Now, another way to be able to look at sharing is through Google Classroom. If you're sharing materials with students, we recommend doing that all through Google Classroom. So you're not trying to change links and change sharing settings in that particular sense. One thing to note is to check your sharing and to do a bit of a checkup. When I go ahead and check sharing here, whoa, I can see I have a lot of sharing. What I can see is it goes to me. I've got some people as editors. And anywhere that you see these type of things like grade eight, read, write, these are all your Google classrooms. So I can see that I have my Google classroom teachers that are able to edit this document. And of course, anyone in ECSD can view. I've got to change some things here. I don't want Daniel to be able to edit my document. I can remove him. Dane, he's not on MTech anymore. I'm going to go ahead and remove him as well. Right here, this is an, a, a temporary exam account I use. No, I just want them to be able to view it. I need to know all of these different pieces. So it's really important to share and to check those settings often. Do you know who it's shared with? One final thing I wanna show you is shared with me. This makes people cuckoo bananas crazy because they're like, these are not all mine. How do I have all this stuff? I can't find it. This is simply a chronological view of everything that has been shared with you. That will include things from Google Classrooms. This is not meant to be organized. If it's from Google Classroom, it's gonna be in your Google Classroom folder. If it's something that a colleague has shared with you, for example, my friend Ben shared with me this intro to SMART, one of the things I can do so I can find it is I can say, would I like to add a shortcut in my drive so it's sitting in my drive when I want to find it. It's just a shortcut. It doesn't actually give me permission. But now I can say, I want to find this in my drive. And I can even choose where I want that shortcut to go. So perhaps I'm going to come and I will put it inside of my MTech folder. So I'm going to get to choose where do I want this file. It doesn't belong to me. It's just been shared with me. And I want to be able to find it later. I'm going to add a shortcut so I can find it later. Of course, if I want to be able to keep it, I'd need to make a copy. If you're looking for Google Classroom things, just remember in your drive, Google Classroom made you a folder. And inside that folder is every single one of your Google Classrooms. And if you go into those Google Classrooms, they're then organized by assignment. So this is all done for you if you're looking for specific classroom things. So that's your checkup to drive. Definitely taking a look and making sure are you aware who you're sharing with, how you're sharing, are you sharing appropriate materials, and is it going to the right person? And remember, when in doubt, remove access to everything so that you can start that sharing appropriately. If you have any questions about sharing settings or anything Google, just make sure to reach out to your MTech team.